When did prop drilling in React get such a bad rep? I mean, prop drilling is one of the fundamental concepts in React. And for some reason, there's this widespread you know, reputation on the internet, like prop drilling, prop drilling, as if it's so bad. There's really no other way to pass props into components except through prop drilling, beside context, outside of that. But in this video, I want to show you just how easy it is to actually prop drill, how I do it, how I get props from a parent component all the way down to a child and all the way down to a grandchild component, and also how to actually change the state from the bottom all the way back up to the top, and to have the state go throughout all the components. Now, typically we think of context when we use this, and that's kind of like an alternative solution, but you don't always need to really rely on context. Plain old simple prop drilling, it can actually solve the problem. So in this video, I'm gonna show you that. So take a look at my demo right here. What I have going on in here is a parent page and I'm using Next.js, but which is pretty much just React. I have a parent page right here, and then I have a component one, which is a child of the parent, and then I have a component two, which is not a child of the parent, but a child of this component. And I wanna show you how I could change state all the way from the bottom, and it goes all the way back up to the top, and then I could change state from any component. Let me refresh from the top, refresh all the way from the bottom, and it's pretty easy. So let me show you, because this is one of the things you truly need to master if you're doing any sort of React web development. You need to figure out how to pass props and change state throughout all of these components. So let's get started. If you guys like React, CSS, Next.js, full stack development, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. I have, let me show you how I have this set up. I have a parent index, you know, in Next.js, I have the index page, which represents the home page. In there, I've imported the header, which is, you know, just has the thing, the header, and then uh, one component, because I want to use that as an example of passing props, and then only in, I don't put the second component because I want to show you even how, you know, a little more complex situation. So I have a component two and that component is being imported inside of the component one. So that's how it, and how it, we could pass props all the way down. So let's get started. The first thing you have to understand is that props, right? It's easy to create state and have a prop inside of any component. But what happens is when you want to pass it down the chain, it all depends, right? You want to start with where do you need to read the prop? That's the bottom line. Because if you only need to create a prop at the parent and you don't need to read it down here, then you set it here. But any, if you need to read the prop and change the prop from anywhere inside the tree, then you need to create a setter, a function that sets the prop from the parent, wherever all the top parent is, is the, the source of truth that needs to pass that function as a callback all the way down the chain. So let's say we have a name Omar and I have a prop. So I'm going to create one here. So const name set name equals use state and it's going to be empty for now. Okay. Let me close this. And now we're gonna say, um, right here, I'm gonna put the prop value name. So right now it's empty and nothing happens. So if I wanna set the state, right? So I could either you know, set it here. So let's say it's Omar by default. There's an Omar and you see it got updated. So let's pass this prop all the way down to the component, to the first component. Okay, so now we have the component one and we're gonna go here and we have to read it. So I'm gonna read it right here as an object as name, you could use props there, but let's go direct and say component. And now I'm gonna place it here, name, right? So all I'm doing now, I'm prop drilling in a way, but I'm only um, step one of prop drilling. I'm just passing the prop name, passing as a prop, passing it down to component one, reading it. And then I'm gonna pass it also. So let's, let's refresh this, right? Let me change the default to Omar and see what happens. It changes in both settings. So here I am, I'm prop drilling, kind of step one of prop drilling, but now I wanna keep on going down the chain. I have, a, I have a child. Now it's easy if there's the component here, that's easy. But when it's in component two, it's inside of component one, all we need to do is pass it on down, all from here. So name, we're, it's just like a variable that's going on down the chain. So we're gonna send it to component two, component two to read it. We have to say, okay, component two, oops, wrong na name. And then we're gonna say name. So I'm gonna put it here. There we have it. So we have the value being read from parent to child. And that's like the step one, the easy. Now, when it gets complicated is if somewhere in the child, 
or the grandchild, we need to change that state. That's where we're just like, wait a second, then how do we do that, right? Well, if anyone needs to change the state, as I mentioned earlier in the video, then you need to create a callback setter function all the way to the parent, and that has to be passed down. If you only need to change the state in this component, then you only need to put the function here. So let's create a function that changes the state. Okay, so now we'll say function, um, uh, let's say function, let's say change name so it doesn't have the same name as the you know, set state function. And then we'll say change name, set name. Basically, we're just saying if this function runs, then just go ahead and change the state. Let me change this back on to, so now we have a default, there's nothing there. Now we have a function that changes the state, right? If I call this function, it's going to set the name to Omar. I'm not making a comment. You could actually add a variable here and, and all that stuff. But keep it simple, right? So now what we need to do, let's say we have a button here. Okay. So I'm going to, you know, basically on click, right? We have a button where we want to update state. I want to demonstrate this. So on click, we're going to say change name. All right. So on click, I'm going to change this state and look what happens from the top. Boom. It because we've already propped so we have we have the name prop all the way down the chain. When I update the state here, it actually changes it across everything. There's no re-rendering. There's some misconceptions about re-rendering. Nothing's re-rendering here. Um, what we have happening is just the state being changed. Now that's great. But what happens now when we want the child or the grandchild? I'm going to show you how I can change the state across all components all the way from the bottom. So what happens is now we have this function and it's in the parent. So what we have to do is pass this function as a callback all the way down to all the components that we want to be able to change the state for. So we'll say I'm going to create one called a prop. I'm creating a prop now called set name equals. And what do I want to pass here? I don't want to pass the prop. I want to pass the function as a callback here all the way down. I'm just passing this function all the way down. So if I go to component one, I want to grab that that callback, really that prop. All I'm doing is it's a prop that's holding a function inside of it and it's called set name. Now, if I go ahead and I create this button that's in component two, I'm going to empty it out. And really see here on the first one, we said on click run the function. But in component one, we're actually running the callback prop right here. So we're saying on click set name and let's see if this works. All right. So let's refresh. Now I'm going to try to do this from the second component. Boom. From child component, it's changed the component all the way across because the props are already there on every component. But now I've just given the capability of that child component to be able to change the state. Now, what happens if I'm in the grandchild? How do I do that? So what we're going to do is just say, hey, this set name, right, that it was passed from here, changing function was passed, component one read as set name, ran it here. Now we're going to say same thing. Pass this all the way down. Pass this function as a callback prop all the way down this component too, down the food chain. So we're going to say set name. I'm going to grab that prop. Let me actually create the button. So right here we have the button. I'm going to say set name. We're just having it read this prop. So now I'm going to refresh, empty the props. I'm going to change the state all the way from the bottom. Look at that. Simple and easy. You can read the state across everywhere and you can change the state from anywhere, from the top, from the child, and then from the grandchild and it's going across. And now if this was vanilla react, you could actually change the page and this should remount um, context. Now that's, I'm going to do that for another video, but I just want to show you that prop drilling isn't that complicated. Now, the only thing is inside of Next.js, but this is a downside for even um, not context completely, but for the most part, it, it does affect context too, is that the page sort of if you refresh the page it regenerates all the state and that's pretty common state just gets back to default and that's the issue so if we go to home right if i change the state from the child and i go to about i've just duplicated the page and you see the state gets changed again um, and that's kind of the fact that's just a typical reacting and also next.js that actually you know it, because every page is sort of its own component, um, it doesn't carry the state, and that's common. Um, and even in React, uh, even in, if you use context, which is supposed to sort of be an alternative to prop drilling, 
If you refresh the page, context also gets reset, right? So it's one problem. I find prop drilling pretty easy and comfortable and simple to use. In another video, I'm going to show you how to use context to do the same thing. The difference with context is that you won't have to sort of pass everything as a callback function, but any component you want to read, you need to read the context, um, which also can be verbose as well. So I like prop drilling. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you like this video, if you like React, CSS, Next.js, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel.